stop fearing, man. What are you talking about? Pull up your socks, fold up your sleeves, and command that word that I put into your mouth, and speak that word of faith in the name of Jesus. Declare it and decree it, and that storm has to stop. Amen. But they did not. They gave in to the unbelief. They gave in to the despair. They gave in to the fear that they challenged the integrity of Jesus. Hmm. Right? How many times we challenge the integrity of Jesus? How many times we put a question mark on Jesus' character and blame him all the time for the storms that we face when he has given you the authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and no means any harm will come against you. And how many times do we exercise that authority in the mighty name of Jesus? Is a question that probably Jesus is trying to ask the same questions to his people. Hmm? So the first thing we need to do is silence the enemy. And do what? Commanding peace to silence to the enemy and the voice is speaking to us. To emphasize this point, the word still in the passage that we read comes from the Greek word phimo, meaning to muzzle. I've got a dog at home, I know how to muzzle my dog. Are you with me? Hey, stop barking. Right? Hey, don't bite. Stop barking. What I'm saying, I muzzle my dog. That has got the yoke of the power to muzzle the voices of the enemy that speaks into your coconut time and again. Come on. There are powers of Satan that is coming again and again and again to you. You have the power and the authority to muzzle the mouth of Satan in the name of Jesus. Every voice that speaks through the storm. As you have the authority and the power to muzzle. That's what it means. Right? So Fimo means what? To muzzle. To paraphrase this passage. Jesus spoke to the voices that were speaking out of the storm saying silence, keep quiet and be muzzled so that you can speak no more. That's what Jesus said. If you correctly understand the dynamics of Jesus was talking from the passage of scripture, he was shutting the voices from the storm. That's what he was doing. Right? How many times have we seen? How many times? You know? Then we can see victory when we muzzle the voice of the Savior. Are you with me? Whenever we can stop that voice that keeps ringing into our ears all the time that you are good for nothing. All the time they say you cannot be healed, you are suffering with terminal sickness. All the time the voice is saying you will always remain poor, you will always be in debt, you can never come out from it. All the time the voices are saying that they will always remain barren and your womb will not be opened. Come on, these are the voices of Satan. These are the storms that you're facing and the voices crying out into your mind to negate the faith that you have in the spirit of realm. That you have the power to destroy everything that comes against you. Hmm? I believe it is it to be the inaction on the part of the disciples to do this muzzling that prompted Jesus to ask this question. There was inaction from the disciples point. And a lot of time Jesus always was rebuking his disciples for the inaction concerning their faith that they have in, in, in God. Are you with me? Because they were coming running to Jesus. They said, hey Jesus, why couldn't we cast out this demon from this guy? Right? When the indignation came upon them and they said, Lord, uh, you know, I brought my lunatic son to your disciples and your disciples could not assist. What a shame. What a shame. If a sick person was brought to the church and the church could not assist because the church did not have to faith and declare and decree health and strength and rebuke that spirit of infirmity from that man. Right? So they came to Jesus and Jesus rebuked them again and he said because of your unbelief. Again, because of your unbelief. They tried everything. They tried exorcism. They tried everything I believe. But they could not help this man, son who was lunatic. And Jesus said, this one does not go except through fasting and praying. And then he did what? He cast the spirit out in the name of Jesus. So what happened? Disciples were ashamed. But that was a training ground. This was a mission work that Jesus was training the hands of the disciples that they will cast out demons in my name. That's what the Bible says in Mark 16, 16, 17, that these signs will follow them, those who believe. Right? They will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. They will cast out demons in my name. So they will do it, right? By whom? By the authority that God has delegated unto you so that you will no longer live under the bondage of Satan. You will be free forever and walk in the freedom that God has guaranteed you through the cross of heaven. Right? 
So that's very important. Hmm? So Jesus was asking a question. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Why are you allowing these voices of fear to speak doubt and unbelief? Insinuating that God does not care about your faith. Hmm? Jesus assures us of this truth. In the book of Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 20 is a very, very beautiful scripture that you know by heart. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. That's what Jesus is saying after his resurrection. What he's saying, all authority, all authority has been given to me, right? To me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples. Mm -hmm. Got it? Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this age. Amen. That's what Jesus was saying. So what Jesus was reminding, all authority I have got from my Father in heaven, and now I take this authority and I have dedicated unto you. So you go, do the works, the medical works, the healing works, the baptizing works, the teaching works, the salvation works that you need to do for your people in this world. And I will be with you. And Jesus expected the same thing from his disciples on the boat. How many times we want Jesus to be a partner? And all of a sudden, we start accusing our partner in life. Right? And we challenge his integrity. We challenge his character and say, God, you're not a faithful one. I'm not going to church now because, you know, you did not write off my debt. You did not provide me a new job. You did not yet open my womb, so I'm not going to go and I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. How many times do we get discouraged? Are you with me? But God is saying, be encouraged. I have given you the authority. You know? And that's what Paul was also saying. You know? And this was the understanding that prompted Apostle Paul to write. He says in the book of Philippians, and he talks about the particular scripture there. And he says in Philippians 4, 10 to 13, he says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatsoever, whatever state I am, to be content. I like that word. Whatever state I am, to be content, I know how to be abased, he says, right? He said, I know, I'm experienced. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. So Paul was an experienced man. And he's talking about the faithfulness of Christ. And then he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I like that scripture. Why? Out of his wealth of experience. After 16 years of constant training by the hands of the Holy Spirit, he was trained ultimately to know and understand that now he has come to a place where he says that godliness with contentment is great. Here. Praise the Lord. The question that we need to ask today is, that do we have faith in God to know that God will never leave us, that God will never forsake us, that He will always be with us. It does not matter which storm we are in, which storm we are entering in or we are in or we are coming out of it, but we will be assured that God is always there in us. That's what David says, what in the book of Psalm chapter 23, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil because my God. Because you are with me, your Lord, and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth. Hallelujah. What happened? What is running over? My cup, my anointing cup. The cup of the Holy Ghost runs over. And therefore, no matter what the storm is, no one can wipe off the joy from my life. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying. For sure I know that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Are you dwelling in the house of the Lord forever? Or when storms come, you take a relaxation, you go for vacation, you take a sabbatical, take some rest. <laughs> right? No. He says, no matter what the valleys are, I will be in the house of God. It is better for me to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to be elsewhere. 
Wow. That was David. That's why God, you know, did what certified about David's character. And he said, he is the man. He is the man who is after God's heart. Hallelujah. And because of that, I will cause my seed to come through his lineage. Wow. Though he had weaknesses, but he was a man after God's heart. He knew that in, irrespective of his circumstances and of his issues of life, he can still overcome, he can still be joyful, he can still win victories, he can still stand and declare of the faithfulness of God, and he will never accuse God concerning his care for David. Right? And therefore, it's very important for us to understand. And during this Passion Week, and we are going to celebrate the Passover very soon. Right? The Passover is on the Good Friday, you know, before that. And we are going to celebrate the Passover. And we are going to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me remind you again, you know, that Jesus is always with us in the storms. Yeah? And the truth is that God cares so much about our fate, our future, that He sent His only begotten Son. Hallelujah. He desired to bless us with hope. He desired to bless us with salvation. He desired to bless us with health and wealth and vigor and vitality. And a beautiful scripture that Brother Hari just read this evening while we were taking the offering. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, he says that I have given you the power to earn and create wealth so that I will establish my covenant with your forefathers. Amen. Wow! When it comes to your finances, he wants you to prosper. When it comes to your wealth, he says that the wealth of the wicked shall become of the righteous. The wealth of the sinners is for the righteous. He is concerned that you will be prosperous. And no wonder 2% of the world population has 70% of the world economy in their hands. And there are none other but the Jews. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, my Jesus was a Jew. My Jesus was born as a Jew and he died a Jew. And let me tell you, I follow a Jewish God. Hallelujah. I follow a Jewish God through whom all the blessings has come upon my life. Amen. I have been engrafted into that spiritual Israel by the power of his blood on the cross of Calvary. I have been engrafted in, engrafted in so that I can enjoy the blessings of the real olive tree. I can enjoy the blessings of the blessing that was pronounced upon the physical Israel. Hallelujah. And let me tell you people of God, if today you are discouraged, if today you are in fear, if today you are still questioning the integrity of God, let me tell you those are the voices of Satan that is speaking into your mind. You have the authority to muzzle the voice of the devil and say, Satan, get out in Jesus' name because I have been washed by the blood of the Lord. I am the son of the most high God. I will be in peace and will be still and know that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Be still and know that I am your God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So no matter what the storms, God will take care of you. And therefore I like the scripture of John chapter 3 verse 16 that we all know by the way. If anyone does